visualization um, is about storytelling, as we said uh, in the very beginning. There are good stories and there are bad stories. Uh, I'm going to show you some good stories, uh, good visualization, some bad story, bad visualization, and uh, some ugly ones. Okay, so <clears throat> what is the visualization about? We, we need to emphasize this again and again. When you create your own visualization, you need to keep this really in mind that the visualization is about storytelling. You are telling a story. You are making your story easier to understand. Do not overcomplicate your story. Do not invent or do not try to insert visual visualization just for visualization's sake. Do not uh, make your stories too complex by adding too many characteristics. So first, uh, the first step of this is to follow conventions. And I'm using the example uh, I see from uh, internet. Uh, so this is about a party, political party identification in the United States. You can see that um, I think common sense is that the United States, in the United States, there are two parties, political parties. One is a Republican, usually represented by red, and another is Democrat, usually represented by blue. The problem with this visualization, if you look carefully, is that uh, instead of, well, Republican is still red, but uh, instead of using blue for Democrat, it put the Democrat in the middle using a much darker blue. And besides, when you have a two-party system, in the two-party system, you would expect each party will be at one end of opinion. And the, the independent person will be in the middle, right? But what this one does is it's putting, um, it's putting Democrats in the middle and the independent on the on the side that makes it very confusing what is the difference what is really the gender gap it's uh it's not going to tell you a good story so if you want to recreate this one you you need to follow convention use a much uh, lighter blue for democrats and using something like a gray or uh, or green whatever it is for independent and move independent to the middle and finally uh, one for small note is that this is party identification, so it's based on the whole population. You would expect something like this will go to 100%, right? You either Republican or Democrat or Independent. There's no forced choice. If this is the case, you should not have. It's uh, going to be uh, going all the way to 100%. You should not have anything beyond 100%. By adding a 125% here, you are suggesting that this value can go beyond 100%, which is not what you want. In fact, you don't even need this 100% at all, this percentage at all, because you already have a clear indication of uh, the percentage here. So, similarly, if you have a pie chart, pie chart should always be used for 100%, uh, the whole population or the whole sample set. In this chart, it's about the support. First of all, this is a good example of which one is which. We mentioned that we talked about uh, human eyes are not so sensitive to angle and area. This 70% is apparently larger than 60%, but can you clearly tell whether this, uh, this one is uh, clearly larger? It's hard. You can, by looking at it over and over again, you can still tell, yes, 70% is larger than 60%, but it is still very hard. So, but outside of this, if you add 60%, 63%, 60%, 70% together, this is 190%. What it suggests is that they are overlapping in the population, right? That can choose one or more, two, uh, two or more. So that's possible. But your chart, this chart is not showing that. Instead, it's dividing the whole population into different uh, sectors and uh, comparing them against each other and getting, thus getting an, uh, a total per uh, percentage of uh, more than 100%. Pie chart should always add up to 100%. And if there are people making choices of uh, multiple choices, either you don't show it or you show it either you show either you show it right here by overlapping 
or you need to clearly mark the um, mark that or using a, a bar chart where people will accept generally accept overlapping in the bar chart in general there is such a thing as a rule of seven and a rule of three rule of three means that don't show more than three types of visualization such as color size position uh, 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 or area something like this and rule of seven is do not show more than seven data groupings unless there is a simple and clear pattern if you have there, there's a very simple and clear pattern yeah you can show more than seven groupings but still i wouldn't recommend you using more than three types of visualization because you have a more than three types of, of a visualization the pattern will not be simple so example here this is the salary of a major league soccer. What can you tell from this chart? You are seeing different colors and apparently the area, you can guess the size of the area is the salary of each, each individual person. But the one above and beyond this, what can you get other than these two guys are making most of the money? Do you, can you tell uh, whether uh, the red guys the defenders or blue guys, the forward, is, is, uh, is uh, excluding these two, are making more. It's very hard to tell, right? And then there is um, uh, the, the allocation here. Some of them are like this, side by side. Some are up and down. Does this provide you with any information? So it is very confusing and it's not providing with any accurate information. It does not tell you a story of uh, what's happening here. It's just a list of uh, different uh, different players with their own salary. There's no indication of uh, what is really going on here. So this is a poor visualization. And the reason of that, first of all, it have much more than seven group data groups. And two, it uses color, it uses size, it uses the position, much more than uh, and the bar chart, much more than three types of visualization hints. That's why it's starting to get confusing and people cannot get what it really is. And uh, now that we get to this, uh, we, I think it w most worth noting is the color. Uh, most worth noting visualization characteristics is color. Remember, colorful does not mean it's helpful. For example, this one, um, each dot basically has its color, but what does this uh, t the color tells us? We can see North Carolina, Georgia are both uh, per, uh, some, somewhat purple, and uh, um, I'm sorry, somewhat uh, pink and purple. And then Wisconsin is, uh, have a similar color. Does this thing uh, mean Wisconsin and North Carolina has some kind of something in common? Not as I can tell here, right? It should be, color should generally be used for grouping or as an indicator. An indicator is another type of grouping, but uh, in general, you either use color to group uh, data that have similar characteristics or use it to indicate outliers. Do not apply one color to each scatter dot. And by doing this, color, first of all, 50 states, you don't have enough color for it. So this, uh, whoever generates this chart uh, also applies some visual effect. And the result is making this violent criminal, uh, violent crime and the property crime um, chart, which is a very serious uh, reporting. It make it looks more like a kindergarten project. And continue on this topic of color. Color should be used either as a grouping, multiple red dots, multiple blue dots, multiple green dots, or as an indicator. Now here is a good example of, uh, of a usage of color. Generally, convention is that if it's a red, it's alert, it's exception. It's a gray, gray is inactive. So for multiple project here, these projects are probably like uh, those blue ones are probably like in line with what's going on and um, uh, proper uh, getting executed uh, properly. But this is probably inactive. Project five, uh, three is probably inactive and the red probably has some issue. So this is good 
um, uh, good indicator. And if you look at the question here, it says uh, evaluation by something and um, in profitability. Likely, these are like under, uh, uh, like are not profitable, uh, and is raising a red flag. Further down the line is the map. Map is very useful, but it can be both a blessing and a curse. Map is very good at conveniently show geographical related data, uh, but it's also the problem is limited by the nature of geography. Uh, geography. So this is a map of a U.S. presidential election. Each state comes uh, comes uh, with a voting of a, a number of electoral votes. From here, most part uh, to the uh, west and the central U.S. are fine, but to the east, the northeast, the issue is there are not and not much enough space for for you to put this electoral votes in the state. That's why you need to have this uh, leading. Now this is okay because the uh, number is uh, there's only one number and that number is small. So for U.S. presidential election, in general, it's okay. But if you have a complex number. If you have a large number, you need to be really careful, especially in, in New York, New Jersey area, because we have Boston, New York, Washington, D.C., Philadelphia, four of the largest cities in the, in, in the country located in, in adjacent to each other. So if you want to display something like your sales figure of these four cities, your profit, uh, some complex number or some complex pattern, of this area, you need to be very careful on how you want to place them. Do not just put the whole country's map there. If you want to show, maybe you want to do something like this, similar to this, have a sub map showing this area and to display it properly. So now let's take a look at uh, the, the best example we can have, the most extreme example. We want to uh, take a look at the greatest visualization in military history. Um, this is so great that uh, the U.S. military general Stanley McChrystal said, when we understand that slide, we'll have won the war. So this great visualiz the greatest visualization is called Afghanistan stability. Uh, it's, uh, this one is uh, famous, or be more precise, uh, notorious uh, for being one of the worst uh, visualization that you can create. So jokes and uh, politics aside, what's wrong with this? If you are commissioned to recreate this, what should you do? The answer is actually pretty simple. Like remember rule of three, how many visualizations uh, characteristics has this uh, implied? Apparently it has uh, size and color and some kind of uh, lines, some kind of uh, positioning, right? Some positioning, but then positioning is not entirely positioning. Look at the light green here, and there's a small light green here, which makes you wonder, is this somehow related to this light green? But if it's related, why would it be placed here, far away from the group? And then there's this uh, rectangles. That's the only place where you have rectangles and some special specialized um, lines here, arrows here. What are these so special that it requires a rectangle? So all these are uh, additional characters are only uh, making things worse. They're making it confusing. If you want to improve that, what should you do? And when I ask this question to the audience, most audience get to the point that they need to reduce, reduce certain groupings, maybe reduce a level of grouping from two levels to one and, uh, and the better groupings reduce that to under seven and uh, reducing some of the lines to make the, the, the whole flow clear. But remember, Visualization is about storytelling. Behind each bad visualization, behind each ugly visualization, there's always an ugly story. 
So the key here is people are missing. Whoever generating this uh, the visualization is missing, um, or I should I uh, should I say is the lack of a true understanding of the issue. There are so many different components that they they see, but they do not know which one is the most important, and which ones are similar or can be combined into one. That's why they put everything together and create this uh, gigantic chart of uh, spaghetti lines. So now let's go to the real one, the real greatest visualization in military history. Um, this one, I don't even know how to pronounce that, this is French. It is a graphical depiction of the losses of French army during Napoleon's invasion of Russia of uh, 1812 to 13, 1813, drawn in 1869 by Charles jo Joseph Minard, a former French civil engineer. So this is what the picture looks like right now. But originally this was red and everything was in French. So I'm coming up with, uh, this is a uh, English translation. What it shows is this the width is the size of the army, of the French army, Napoleon's army, as they enter Russia. As they get across this geographical spaces, different cities, different towns, and across the rivers, they are uh, gradually they are reducing size, right? You, you look at this, the width is the size of our army. After each battle, they lose some person. After each battle, they lose some person. <coughs> they continue to lose their troops <coughs> until they arrive in Moscow and they start their disastrous retreat. Under here is the, <coughs> the temperature of the Russian winter. As you can see, the, uh, the temperature is going down and down and down. And uh, similarly, army, the size of the army is going down and down and down all the way until in the end, that's the ending size of our army, and that's the beginning versus the beginning size of our army. Now this is widely conceived as one of the greatest visualization. And what does it do right, especially comparing to the previous uh, greatest uh, visualization in military history? These two uh, great visualizations compare side by side. What does this one do right? Because this one get to the point of uh, winning and lose. <coughs> if you think uh, how do you evaluate win or lose, right? In a military sense, now I'm not an expert in politics, but in a military sense, either you conquer land or you, uh, you, you uh, win or lose some troops. You lose a troop, you lost your troop, you, you lost the war. So this picture grabs the most important part, the two, uh, two most important characteristics of a military operation, land and the size of army. It shows us the size of army was like this big and uh, gradually reduced during the operation and uh, reduced to this size, back to the starting position. At one point, they stretch all the way to Moscow. And at, at that time, it's hard to tell whether it's a win or lose. You are, you are trading your ar soldiers' lives for land, but then eventually you lose them all. So that's a total loss. This is a very simple way of telling a complex story, a, a long a story with so many battles and uh, so many factors, to, uh, putting them into one single visualization, right? So this is no wonder the greatest visualization Consider the greatest visualization in military history. That being said, what if you have a really uh, have a complex story? What do you do? The answer is what you should do is you need to define a storyline. You need to identify the components of your story. Break it, uh, your complex story into multiple simple ones and uh, use multiple, uh, which translate to use multiple visualization, ar arrange them in logical order. Then further down in the Power BI or whatever tool you use, utilizing 
separate the page tab and uh, use links to connect a storyline. So you will create multiple visualization. So you will uh, break up the story into smaller pieces and uh, use multiple visualization, each representing one piece and arrange them in a logical order. And uh, to implement this, put them into different page or tab and use links to connect the storyline. So starting with element replace uh, element placement in societies where writing starts from left to right, human eyes usually starting at upper left corner, then horizontally move to the right, then get back and uh, vertically move down, then look at the center, uh, uh, the bulk of the visualization page. So what you want to do is. In the upper left corner, you want to place the most important thing, your marketing campaign, your marketing uh, items, your logo, company logos. And in the top horizontal bar, this is where you place your key indicators. Because these people may not look even look at this here, but they will glance through this here. So any number you think is important that worth noting, put it here. And uh, then you have uh, apply some visual uh, visual characteristics. If there's the like a red uh, alert, use a red uh, red font, or bold font, or a combination of a red and bold. And if it, everything's good, then use a green, right? And to the left, you want to uh, people will always think these are breakdowns of your uh, your um your dashboard so it will be breakdown one breakdown two if this is a category it will be subcategories and this people get used to this by <coughs> this habit uh, from their reading of books so that's when you have a vertical bar as a breakdowns and links then put it in the main area your visualization now or if you have a right vertical bar place your filters and notes here so this is how you would like to uh, and then you can define um, multiple tabs or pages and use the links to navigate through different page. You will have um, one storyline, break it down into small uh, stories, arrange them in order. Each one is a visualization and uh, use uh, links to the, the link them so that when you present, you can go from one story to another, to another, to another. That's how you would like to handle a complex story.